the power of God. You got to know that. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to get it. So praying alone will not get your prayers answered. No, he answers prayers that are full of faith. I want to ask you this question. What does Satan fear? And I want you to think about that for a moment. Because the actual question should not be what does Satan fear, but who does the devil fear? And I can tell you that he doesn't fear Catholics. He doesn't fear Baptists or Pentecostals. He doesn't fear Charismatics or Word Ministries. He's not afraid of the Pope. He's not afraid of a bishop or the praise or the prayer leader. He's not intimidated by any of them. In fact, the devil doesn't fear most Christians. But he does have a fear of God. And he fears believers who know how to pray and command by faith in such a way that God himself will move on their behalf. Those are the people he's intimidated and fearful of. And most people generally love me, but the devil in them are afraid of me. And when someone is, is distant from me and don't, don't have an attraction towards the grace of God in me, they, it's the enemy that's operating in them because that devil knows that I will recognize him and expose him and that person would want to be free. You see, whenever someone really wants to be free, when they're under bondage, they'll go to wherever it is, or whoever it is, rather, that has the authority and the power to recognize what they are under the bondage of. I'm here to tell you that God has a way to tell you how to be free. Can you turn my phone off, Deborah? Glory to God. Is that my phone? Bless the Lord. But most people don't realize that if you get into a place, you have my phone? Oh, okay, glory to God. That if you get in a place where you're struggling with certain things, you got to get to the point where you want to get out of it. How many of you t- are tired of struggling? Well, you got to be tired of being tired of struggling. Satan is evidently highly skilled at predicting human behavior. He's watched you all your life. He's been around since the beginning of time for mankind. He was here before mankind was created. God created angels first before he created man. And Satan recognizes one thing. He's afraid of the person who is clothed and wearing Jesus. And they walk in faith in God. When a person understands that, things begin to change. The enemy knows that uh, those those who are really born again and those who really love God. In the Bible, the scripture tells us a story about men, the seven sons of Sceva, who went out and tried to cast out devils. And as they were casting out devils, the devil one day said to them, stopped and said, hey, look. I know Jesus because they were casting the devil out in the name of Jesus, the one that Paul talked about. In other words, they were saying, I don't have a personal relationship with that Jesus, but I seen somebody else do it in the name of Jesus. And he is saying, I saw Paul do it. And the devil said, now I know Paul and I'm certainly aware of Jesus, but who are you? Many of you are trying to cast out a devil in your own life or in your own situation, but you're walking with him. You can't hold hands with the devil and get free from him. Are y'all listening to me? You see, unshakable faith in the Lord causes hell to rage. And nothing poses a greater threat to Satan's kingdom than a believer who is unmovable in faith. They walk in faith. They know what God wants them to do. Why is it? Because I'm going to tell you this. It is, a, it is by faith that it's rele- it releases the power of God to subdue kingdoms. In fact, by faith, righteousness is born in the hearts of believers and demonic fires are quenched. It quenches every trial and every tribulation. I don't care how fiery or how intense that fire is. 
And maybe right now you're facing a terrible storm in your life. Maybe your, your marriage is going through something. Maybe the troubles seem to accelerate. Your money problems are accelerating. Your marriage problems are reaching the point of divorce. Your job, there's troubles on your job. Enemies are coming at you, pounding like waves at you, beating on you. But the sea of trouble rages inside you, but the Lord seems to be sleeping through it all. And I'm telling you, God is not asleep. Your faith is. Yes, sir. Has your faith been zapped? Do you actually believe in God or are you just playing it? Is it diminishing slowly away with each new disappointment? Every time you get disappointment, you trust less and less in God than ever before. Do you say in your own heart, God, don't you care if we perish? Are you going to just leave us here? Will you let this storm drown us and kill us? Let me just give you something that the Bible says. Over in Psalms 115, verse 11, it says, You who fear the Lord, trust in him. He is their, their help and their shield. So God is your shield and your help if you trust in him, no matter how difficult or how challenging the situation is. The ability to, uh, of faith, the ability of faith is success placed in your hands. You have all the secret keys in your hands and don't even know it. The ability of success is in your faith, your faith in God. But what you do with it is not left up to God, it's left up to you. So your ability to access faith is the key to success placed in your hand. Faith in God leads to success every single time. There is absolutely no failure in faith, none. You can't walk by faith and stumble. You won't even fall. If you do, you're not walking by faith. Are y'all listening to me? You have the ability to unlock every single door the devil has tried to lock you out of. It's funny how we are saying to God, come and save me. And God is saying, I've given you everything to save yourself. I've given you the ability to do all things, and yet you keep using me as a corporate of why you are in bondage. It's funny how you can spend all your money and say, God, why did you let me go into debt? Right. I don't know what kind of psychology you're using, but I'm telling you that a child of God doesn't think that way. Not a healthy child of God. So when the key of faith in God is placed in your hand, it's also the faith of God which is placed in your hand. And you have the ability to unlock every do door. And if you don't exercise that ability, that power, or the lack of use of the lack of the use of that power is yours. It's your responsibility. Most Christians doesn't have don't have a, a relationship with Jesus. It's funny, you're calling yourself a Christian, but you don't have a relationship with them. Nor are they interested in having a real relationship with them. They want success without labor. They want to go to heaven, but they don't want to live responsibly of the life worthy of going to heaven. Can I help you with this? God will not allow someone into his heaven who lives like hell on earth. You want to know the truth. You can't want intimacy with God without prayer. I think the worst display of a horrible relationship is when you see two people that are married that don't even communicate. They don't talk. They're found at the dinner table and they still don't talk. They go to bed and they seldom say goodnight. That's got to be a horrible relationship. And you want intimacy and we don't talk? Can I help you? 
I can tell you this, especially for most men. If you don't learn to open your mouth and say what's right, the woman is going to disregard giving you what you want. Okay, I, I, I got some silence in here. Are y'all listening to me? Let me tell you what, it's, it's, it's odd. You can want to go to God. You say, God, help me with this. And God says, hey, you know what, uh, uh, Cindy, I haven't, uh, Michael, I haven't, uh, Deborah, uh, 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 Gary, I haven't talked with you in the last six months. Have you ever had someone who haven't seen, haven't seen you in a while come and say, can I borrow something? <laughs> they haven't, you haven't seen them in more than probably six months, yes. but they're calling you. And some of you, you know when you get a call from some of those people, you know exactly why they're calling. Yes, you avoid picking up the phone, but one day you just accidentally just quickly picked up the phone and said, oh gosh. Yeah, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> uh oh, dog, I'll call you back, I can hardly hear you. <laughs> you know what they're going to ask for. You know, and there's nothing worse then when you know when someone wants something, that's when they're nice to you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. God wants intimacy with you. He wants to pour and pump as much faith into your heart as possible. It's you that don't want it. It's not him. He wants to literally disclose everything that he's actually promised for you and created for you. But you don't want it on his terms. You want it on your own. They want success again but they just don't want to have to do what is necessary. It's like, can, I, I remember hearing the guy, uh, Bolt, the, 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 the great runner from Jamaica. He said, I train for hours upon a day, hours and days. I pray, I literally train for hours, and I mean hours for, to just run a race for less than 30 seconds. You want the power of God operating in your life, you're going to have to spend some time in his word. And you're certainly going to have to spend some time on your knees. Are y'all listening to me? You don't have to stay there all day, but you do need to spend some time talking to God, communicating with him. Because the power of faith is in his word. You want to hear from God to hear what he has to say about your situation. Because your self-portrait determines your self-conduct. If you don't get what God is saying about you and who you are, you're not going to be able to display the kind of faith when you're going through trials and tribulations. Why should God help you when you're unwilling to walk away from what you're asking him to help you with? Are y'all listening to me? It's like people are saying, you know, God help a, a, a pastor pray, pray for my, pray for this person I'm involved with. First of all, you're not married to him. So, so if you're doing the nasty, you're already out of the will of God. And you say, I, I just want our relationship to be perfect or, or he cheated on me. How do you cheat on somebody you're not married to? So if you're unwilling to walk away from the person, don't ask for help Amen. with the person. Look at somebody and say, boy, that message must be for you, because it ain't for me. <laughs> I know people, you, you, I don't want you to get offended, but I want you to, to know the truth. 
because the truth is what makes you free. You're not going to stay the age you're at right now. I tell young people all the time, oh, yeah, yeah, you think you're going to stay 20 and 21 and keep that body, you know, you, you, look at us. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, just wait, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's like the old folk would tell you, keep living, keep living. You're like, oh, I'm never going to get there. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to keep my shape, and I'm going to keep my chest. Some of those people you see today, they're not even 40 yet. They're already 40 in the waist. Bishop, you told me marriage would do this. No, you did it to yourself, boy. Don't put it on the marriage. <laughs> now, listen to me. The devil is real. And his strategies are hidden in plain sight. Yes. And the devil creates an atmosphere of distractions and temptations all around us. It's intentional. And when you pick up your phone or turn on your television, or walk out your door, you're bombarded with images and messages that glorifies evil, demeans what is good, and leads to a disastrous life and lifestyle. Now, does the devil want to steal your health? Absolutely. How about your prosperity and your provision? Oh, you better believe it. Does the devil want to steal your joy and your peace? Oh, you better bet your bottom dollar. You never hear me holler until you see me do the James Brown. Anyway, that's just, that's just, it just came to me right at that point. Excuse me. That's actually a song for you young people. That's, that's yeah, that's actually a song. Glory to God. The devil is more interested in stealing your faith in God than he is in stealing anything else. If he can steal your faith, he can steal your joy. He can steal your peace. However, the devil cannot steal what you cannot possess or what you don't presently possess. The devil targets your health, your financial prosperity, your peace of mind. He targets your marriage and your relationship with the saints. He makes sure that he targets your prayer life he targets your, your going to church. He makes sure that, you see, one of the components that Satan uses against prayer is apathy and tiredness, fatigue. Start praying and watch you start getting sleepy. It can be right after you got up. You took a shower, you're lively, you're vibrant, you're ready to go. And while you're praying, you're saying, oh, God, in Jesus' name. <laughs> and you say, where did this fatigue come from? You're starting to break through. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to. Start trying to do right or do right and watch the opposition comes. Temptation comes because you are doing right. Sometimes trouble don't come because you're doing bad. Trouble comes because, hear me on this, some of you are around bad people. When the bad people leave, bad things stop happening. Also, when trouble comes, it's because you're getting closer to God. And the enemy wants to keep you from getting close to God. Satan is really after your faith in God with a passion. He's after the ability of your speaking to him or for, against him. You see, you cannot love or you cannot say that you love God and won't open your mouth for him. The enemy doesn't want you to learn how to speak God's language. If you notice, even in religion itself, in churches, they are against tongues when everybody has one. <laughs> the odd thing is they are against something that they don't like themselves. That tells you who's controlled by the enemy. 
Do you honestly believe that you can be strong in the Lord and not verbalize his strength as a witness for him? Let me tell you something. We don't fight against the devil with conventional weapons. We fight against the devil with the word of God. Every time Jesus was confronted by Satan, he said what? It is written. It is written. That means he must have read something. Pick up your Bible and start reading it. I don't care if you read a page a day, a chapter a day, a few verses a day. Read it. I want you, if you don't want to believe that, pick it up, read your Bible, and watch the temptations that come as a result of it. Watch the enemy say, oh, this is not a good time. Oh, the phone just rang. Oh, you got to get on the phone. Oh, you're almost late for this. Oh, watch what the enemy allows or comes or brings into your life when you start trying to read the Bible. Because he knows that if you get the word, you get the greatest weapon against him that he has no defense against. Nothing. And that's why you are instructed by Paul over in 1 Timothy 6 and 12 to fight the good fight of faith. The battles you face is about who and what you will believe. Let me say that again. The battles you face are about who and what you will believe. You never outgrow spiritual warfare. You simply learn how to fight. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent, violence taken by force. If you don't know how to fight spiritually, you're going to have to learn that if you're going to survive. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to walk against the enemy, Amen. the devil. Your future is decided by who you choose to believe. Yes, the master of your life is whoever you give, give control over your mouth to. Are y'all listening to me? The master of your life is whoever controls your mouth. The devil knows that he knows what most Christians don't know about faith. But most Christians are too spiritually discombobulated to discover his mysteries. Satan is very knowledgeable about the power of faith. And he knows with faith he, you can destroy his kingdom. You can make your marriage the most blissful, eventful occurrence while on this planet if you have faith. Your economy will change if you have faith. Your power will be displayed in such a way that men will look at you and say, there's something that that person is wearing because you're walking by faith. The devil knows that faith is the bridge that all of God's blessings and provisions and activities on this earth is transferred from heaven to this earth's rim. He knows. That's why he doesn't want you to learn how to walk by faith. And he certainly doesn't want you to learn how to get it. Because as long as you stay in faith, you are always winning. And what you started in faith, you've got to continue in faith until the desired product are what you uh, uh, actually begin to manifest. So don't give up, don't give in, because God is right on the verge of breaking through on your behalf. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. Satan is after your faith. And if you have no faith, your life has nothing to stand on. Satan wants you to feel hopeless instead of hopeful. Powerless instead of powerful. And if you're tired of going back and forth, with the same battles with anger and sex out of wedlock or drugs or marital problems and alcohol, insecurity, sickness and disease, you need to know how to keep your faith up. The Bible says for us to be faithful. Did you know that the word faithful is simply two words? But in our language, we love to cut everything down to one. That's why the English language or people from Britain says that we don't speak good English because we shorten every word. 
So instead of faithful, we'll say faithful. But in actually, actuality, you should be faithful. Full of faith. Now, nobody wants to drive, especially when you're going the distance, with a half tank. Half filled tank. Or you don't want to just go through life when you just have a little money. You want everything to be full. That's the status. God wants you to be overflowing. The scripture says, David says, that, that, that my cup runneth over. He didn't say it sometimes run over. He is saying it runs over. To, to say that it runs over, it's not just full. It keeps filling up. And that's what faith does when you learn how to operate in it. The influence of this world is great, but we serve a God that is even greater. But here's the wisdom and the biblical insight you need to literally resist the devil and stand firm in the ho it, on holy ground. The Bible says over in James, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse. Clearly, James is talking about something knowing that in our day and time, we're experiencing what we need to have bond of freedom from. James 4 and 7 says, therefore, submit. Somebody say submit. submit. The word means to yield, to bow down, take a knee. Acknowledge, submit to God, resist the devil. That means the only way you can resist the devil is to be full or wear the full armor of God. Resist the devil. And what, he's, what is the devil going to do? Now, have you ever tried to resist the devil without God? Say yes, because we, were, we all have tried and failed. I remember saying that, uh, you know, I'm not going to smoke anymore. When I used to smoke and, uh, uh, when I was a young man, and I said, I'm going to give it over because I know I can do it. And I never asked God, but I just believed I could do it, only to discover a week later I was, I was smoking. And then I, 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 I made myself feel good about it by saying, I told you I could stop. But it was like a California stop. You roll up to the stop sign. You don't stop. You just slow down. Then you just keep going. And that's what we do in life. Well, I did well. This is what, when, when Paul comes in. You ran well, but who hindered you? What slowed your progress? What made you stop? What made you give up? So it says, draw near to God, the, the next verse, the eighth verse. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's reciprocal. Here's the, 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 the one thing that people think that God won't do is that God will not work based on what you do. You think God comes to you regardless. No, he comes to you as you approach him. It's not make one step and he'll make two. Don't let somebody fool you. If you make one step, he'll make one step. If you take two steps, he'll take two steps. He's going to work on, 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 the, on the process of reciprocating exactly what you do. You draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So he says, draw, draw near to God. He says, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That, that word double-minded is where we get the word doubt. The word doubt. And when someone is doubtful, they are double-minded. Will he do it? Won't he do it? You know, is he going to do it? Uh, 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 does he love me? Does he not love me? Does she love me? Does, you know, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. You're dual-minded. And the scripture is so clear in saying that those who are like that should never think that they can receive anything from the Lord. Now, how can faith play a role in achieving success? All of us want to be successful, but only a few of us know that we are. In other words, a success in, real, in life for real is not about achieving it. Are you wanting to hear the truth? The Bible says over in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing. 
and hearing by the So faith comes by hearing God, God's word, right? So imagine if you're hearing something negative. Doubt comes by hearing, hearing by negative talk. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. God's word is how you get faith in God or the faith of God. And faith in God is how you have good success. Supernatural faith is never apart from God. It is not a head knowledge. It is a heart intuitive knowing. You know that you know that you know. Now, when you know who you are, something changes about you. But when you don't know who you are, you never change. You only cover what you want to not expose anymore. But you've never changed. That's why you still do things behind closed doors. Hey, now that you heard that word, if you want to catch the full message of what I'm sharing that you may not have heard in this, I guarantee you, you want to go to joycenter.org. That's J-O-Y-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org, O-R-G. And tune in and watch the entire program because there's a lot more than what you just saw. So God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon.